Well, good morning and welcome. And welcome again to my favorite place to actually do our morning devotionals. It is an absolutely fantastic day. Look at it out here, folks. How can we not take some time to be up here and just enjoy the blessings that we, we have here in our country? And you know, truthfully, we are incredibly blessed in Canada when you stop and think about it. Have, have you ever stopped and considered how much God has given to us? There was a, a little bit of research done by the Canadian Red Cross, and they said that if you have money in your bank, if you have uh, money in, your, in a change purse, or maybe a little bit of change in your wallet, then you are a, among the top 8% of the world's wealthiest people. Stop and think about that. We sometimes look at what we don't have, and we fail to see what we actually are blessed with. We are blessed incredibly much, but I wonder if we sometimes take our, our, all the things that we have for granted and we are not as grateful as we should be. Let, let me introduce you to a lady by the name of Hetty Green. Now, Hetty was one of the richest women in America back in the late 1800s. Her estate was worth uh, over a hundred million dollars in 1916 when she passed away. But Hetty, though she was the richest lady at the time, she was also one of the stingiest. And and in my research, I found that she uh, she would eat cold oatmeal because it cost too much to heat it up. Can you imagine that? Her son actually had to have his his leg amputated because she delayed so long in looking for a free clinic that it was uh, incurable. Crazy, huh? Well, you know, the thing is, you think about this woman, and we have to think about ourselves as well. Hetty, <laughs> Hetty died when she got a stroke because she was arguing with someone about the value of drinking skimmed milk. See, we may not be as greedy as that and have all that wealth, but sometimes we become incredibly greeter, greedy when we fail to look at the riches that God has given us, both physically, but most important, spiritually. The book of Ephesians, the main theme in the book of Ephesians is our riches in Christ. Let's look at the very first few verses in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. It's interesting to note that Paul is writing to a church in the wealthiest part of the world in Asia Minor at that time. The church in Ephesus was living in a place, in a city, that was basically known as being the Bank of Asia. See, in, in Asia, there was what was set up was the, one of the seven great wonders of the world, which was the great temple of Diana. And it was there, and it was not just the center of idolatry, this temple, but it was a, a place where people would come and deposit wealth. So some of the greatest art, artifacts and treasures in the ancient world were housed in this building. So let's talk about, about this book a little bit. Let's talk about the author, first of all. Paul is finding himself in, sitting in a Roman prison as he's writing to this church in, in Ephesus. He had visited this church twice on two different missionary journeys. He visited on his first missionary journey back in about AD 53. And then two years later, he came and he, and he spent a, a longer period of time there, probably two years just ministering to these folks in Ephesus. And he had a huge evangelistic crusade, so, so to call, that he did at the time to talk to the people in Ephesus. He established a great stolid church where the, the temple of Diana was the center of work. So what was his purpose? Why did he go there and why did he write this letter? Well, the purpose was, like I said, to talk about the great riches that we have in Jesus. Again, verses 2 to 3 says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. 
Listen, the source of your blessings isn't your bank account. It isn't your job. It isn't your fantastic talents, whatever it may be. The source of your blessing, and he was saying this to the people there as well. It wasn't the, the city itself. The source was Jesus. And we got to get it straight. We got to realize that God has given us the blessings that we have. And, and we're talking about spiritual blessings here. We're not talking about a bigger house or, or a better car or, or even a nicer fishing boat. No, what we're talking about is God blesses us and wants to bless us with spiritual blessings, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. We get way too caught up in the houses and the cars and the fishing boat. And we forget to focus on the blessing that we have through the Holy Spirit. That God has given you his Holy Spirit so that you can have eternal hope. So that you can have guidance and you can have wisdom and you can have encouragement from him. Now that's huge. That's way better than a, a great house and, and all the riches that were in Ephesus or that are in our lives today. Now listen, just because God has given us all these blessings doesn't mean he shields us from poverty or pain. And we'll look at some of that stuff as we go through this book. But it does mean that he will guide us through it. He will give us strength and he will give us comfort and encouragement. We need to focus, folks, on our blessings that we have. The blessing of living in our country but, and the blessings of all the, the, the stuff God has given us. But we've got to most importantly focus on the blessing, the spiritual blessing that God has instilled in us. And, and I want to end by asking you, what are you doing with your blessing? See, because if we're just taking them and hoarding them and keeping them to ourselves, then we've totally missed the boat. And we're going to talk about that in the, in the weeks to come. But are we using them to honor God and are we using them to be an example to others around us? We don't want to be like Hetty Green. We want to be like Paul, who says, God, you've blessed me. Help me to bless others. Father, I thank you for this morning. And I thank you for the opportunity of getting into this book, this incredible book of Ephesians. And Lord, as we look at the many principles of the spiritual blessing that we have through you, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, we would live not as paupers. We wouldn't live as those that have nothing, but we would see what we have and Father, we would live in a way that honors you and in a way that is considerate of others. So God, I pray, give us wisdom as we go through this book and bless those that are listening to me now. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks so very much again for joining me from the top of the church. Looking so forward as we go through the book of Ephesians and what God is going to show you. Again, I encourage you to read ahead. Go for it. Read the spoiler alerts. Awesome. Read ahead. And then as we come together, hopefully we can, we can share things together by all means. I encourage you even to, uh, to get a hold of me. Ask me questions. Love to hear from you. God bless you. Have a great day.